Hey guys, welcome to episode 36. This is also the first Fan Friday, so welcome to Fan Friday. Um, this is something that I'm going to try to do every Friday, and uh, what I'm going to do is try to find uh, a comment or an email every week, and uh, you know, it's it's whatever I find that's most compelling, and I'm going to try to address it in a video. Um, so before I get to that, I have one quick update which I need to make. I'm really excited about this. Uh, I've just spent the last week or so putting together this spreadsheet, and it's a spreadsheet of stock tanks. And for anyone who doesn't know, um, people who keep turtles need large aquariums. And large aquariums oftentimes um, are really expensive, so um, the cheaper alternative is a stock tank. They're made for watering cattle. Um, and people typically just go with um, the Rubbermaid stock tank. They get up to 300 gallons. But as you can see here, um, I've got a good number of them. I've got 80 lines here. So 80 different stock tanks that I found from various uh, manufacturers and various brands and different uh, capacities and, and shapes and styles. And um, I've included the, the length and the width and the height and the weight and the drain size and the price. But what's most important here is actually towards the end here. It's the dollars per gallon. And that's really what speaks volumes about stock tanks. Um, when you're talking aquariums, glass aquariums, um, you're looking at a dollar a gallon is, is the normal. Um, if, if you go with anything else like acrylic, uh, it's going to be more than a dollar a gallon. But with stock tanks, um, if you sort by this column here, um, you can see some of these aren't filled in yet. Anything, anything that's highlighted, um, I'm still working on, but it, it, it definitely is a work in progress. But you'll see 33 cents a 33 cents a gallon, and there are a few of them that are that that cheap. Uh, and as you can see here, they are the nine nine foot diameter. Uh, thousand gallon um, stock tank so they are very large and that the trend uh, has been that at least that I've noticed is is the larger um, the larger the tank gets the 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 better the price gets overall um, so anyways I'll make that link available in this video comment uh, so you can check it out I also posted it on turtle forum under the habitats thread um, so go check that out as well. But um, let's move on to, um, actually, I'll sit right here for one more minute. Move on to Fan Friday. Um, the first the first Fan Friday that I'm going to do is on this video. It's one of the first videos that I've, I've ever posted on YouTube. It's called Time Lapse Aquarium Tank Rack Construction. And this was two years ago um, in a basement apartment that I was renting. And uh, I constructed this tank rack, it's 10 gallon tanks, to hold uh, my fancy guppies that I was breeding at the time. And I took a time lapse video, it's only about a minute long. Um, it's got 20, 22,000 views right now. And uh, you, you can check it out, it's at the bottom, it's the, at the bottom of my videos um, on my channel. Um, but I had some people asking questions about um, exactly you know what materials I used to build it and uh, why I made the decisions I did um, when building it. So Matt68046 asked um, for an update video on the guppy tank rack and I'm sorry to say I can't really make an update video on the rack itself because the rack itself doesn't exist anymore. I had to uh, tear it down um, tear it down when I moved but uh, what I can do is I can give you kind of a tour of uh, what was involved in building it and uh, UCD Chan um, asked about some of the calculations asked about you know what what materials exactly I used um, and so um, he, he did a pretty good job 
at uh, guessing at, at what materials I used, uh, but I just wanted to go into some detail um, to help you guys out if, if you were considering um, building a rack, sort of like what I did. And uh, here it is, this is kind of the, the profile view of the rack. Uh, it stands about five feet tall, and it's about uh, eight feet wide. And um, my thinking here was I wanted to maximize the number of gallons that were off the floor, um, but I, uh, I wanted to do it for the cheapest price possible. And I've seen people buy steel aquarium uh, or steel racking systems that aren't really built for aquariums. They can't really hold the weight. Um, and they ultimately rust out and, and they can't hold a lot of aquariums. Uh, I've also seen people build their own uh, two by four stands and those seem to work fairly well. They last quite a bit longer, um, but the the problem is they're kind of a pain in the neck to put together. Uh, they're hard to take apart and uh, unless you really know what you're doing with your calculations, um, you know, you can find yourself in a, in a world of trouble because everything needs to be absolutely level. So I wanted to um, minimize the price and maximize the number of gallons, and this is what I came up with. Uh, I started out with 10-gallon uh, aquariums um, for guppy breeding. 10-gallon aquariums are pretty standard. They're uh, 10 inches wide and 20 inches long. And what I did was I placed them... Um, so that the uh, the 10 inch side was uh, was was facing was facing you, uh, so, so I could get as many of them in as possible. Um, so I had eight of them lined up in a row on on the shelf together, and uh, uh, it was connected by uh, two by fours by eights uh, lumber and uh, four by eight by th I think it was three quarter plywood. And uh, the only other building component that I used were uh, concrete blocks, and they weren't um, uh, affixed in any way. They were just stacked on top of one another. And uh, the majority of the blocks I used were 8x8x16 eight by eight by concrete blocks. They're the, the big fat ones with the two holes in them. And then I also used 8x4x16 by by concrete blocks, and those are a little bit harder to find. Um, but you can find them at hardware stores and uh, you can find them even cheaper at concrete yards. Um, so what I did here was my, my approach was to stack the concrete blocks. I started with three at the bottom and then I built one shelf and then I stacked another um, three on each side, another shelf, another three blocks and then the final shelf. And uh, each, each of these shelves uh, consisted of four 2x4s. Uh, you can see this is how I built the frame. And then I put end pieces. Um, so, and, and then I put the, the plywood on top of that. And uh, if, if you do out the math, um, these are all nominal dimensions. But if you, if you do out the math uh, with 2x4s with, uh, that are eight feet, 8 feet long, that matches perfectly with a piece of plywood and the plywood is ripped in half straight down the center so one piece of plywood gets you two shelves and um, that way I, I maximize the the uh, the lumber that I purchased I didn't I ha hardly had any waste whatsoever after I put this thing together um, so it was fairly cheap uh, each one of these racks um, ran me less than a hundred dollars. I only built one, but um, if you take that number and you apply it to um, an entire fish room, say something that looks something like this, uh, with ten racks set up, that's less than a thousand dollars, which is pretty phenomenal considering how much money some people do spend buying those steel racks or you know building their own um, building their own out of all. Uh, two by four lumber or two by six or, or whatever um, So under a thousand dollars and and you could have a an entire room full of aquariums um, now Since this is uh, two feet each one of these frames was two feet deep uh, and and since the aquariums um, 
were uh, 20 inches deep. Uh, I, I did have a little bit of, of wiggle room. There are a couple inches on the front and the back of those aquariums. So everything didn't fit uh, exactly. But in terms of this overall width, uh, 10 tanks fit almost exactly here. And um, they actually wouldn't fit except for the fact that I designed this to be modular. So to set up multiple um, in a row, um, what I've done here is this is an end side, so the uh, the frame goes all the way to the end here, but on the other side uh, it only goes halfway, and when you do that you gain an extra four inches here, which allows you to get all eight tanks without hitting the uh, the concrete walls. Um, I didn't insulate it, but if I was to do it again, I, I definitely would um, use some insulation. And uh, that, that would probably make it fit exactly. Um, so, yeah, under $100. Uh, it went up in just a few hours. Um, I used just uh, strip lighting, um, fluorescent lighting, uh, under each shelf. And uh, I did have uh, the wastewater going to a 10-gallon tank on the floor, um, that did have a, a, a pump that was pumping it um, to the sink. Um, so what I did right overall, I, I think I maximized my lumber, I minimized my price, and because I designed this um, modularly, um, it was very easy to put up, very easy to take down, um, and it's, it's something that is very manageable. It's something that one person can do by themselves. Uh, which was cool. And if I was to do it again, um, some of the learnings that I had, uh, I, I probably wouldn't put a heater in every tank. I had a heater in every tank and, and that got really expensive. I would either heat the room or um, I would connect all of the tanks. I would drill the tanks. I'd put um, overflows on all the tanks and in the one sump tank I would have a heater uh, to, to minimize that, that expense. And uh, I, I probably wouldn't use sponge filters either. If you noticed in the video, I used uh, sponge filters in every tank. And uh, that just wasn't efficient enough. It was just too much maintenance overall. Um, so what I definitely would do is drill the tanks, put the overflows in, and then just have a return line going to each tank. And uh, I'd also add an auto top off. And... Um, that would allow me to automatically refill the tank after I siphon water out, which is pretty key. Um, the thing there is you need to make sure that your your water is conditioned um, before, before it gets automatically topped off. And then also if I was on a well, I would definitely do a drip irrigation line that would allow fresh water to be added to each tank every day. Um, even though it's all overflowing, you know, you're getting new water in the tank. And then, uh, because new water would constantly be added, I would also have a wastewater overflow, uh, going, going out of the system. Um, that way the water would constantly turn over. It would be heated by itself. You, you know, you could come in and you can do a water change and it would, it would, uh, fill itself back up and it would be minimal maintenance in terms of keeping the water level where it's supposed to be. And, um, you know, as, as clean as it should be. Um, the other thing that I would probably do is I'd change the color temperature on my lighting. Um, I had daylight bulbs in, I believe, or maybe some of them were even grow light bulbs. Uh, but I'd probably do a higher color temperature, maybe a, an actinic uh, blue color to really make the, the fish pop. Especially with guppies, uh, you really want to see all of the shine and shimmer you can out of them. Um, and that would probably... Um, avoid some of the algae blooms that I had, but I'm not sure. Um, like I said earlier, I would definitely insulate with styrofoam. It was in the basement, so it did get cold sometimes. And, uh, you know, the last thing I want to mention is it is a lot of work. Um, you don't think it's a lot of work until you get into it, but I, I should have vacuumed every single one of those tanks every day, um, especially since they weren't all one system. Um, maybe that would be once a week if it was all one system uh, with drilled tanks. Um, but you got to do your water changes. You got to you gotta keep up with, with the amount of debris in the tanks. 
um, you, you know, you, you got to watch over, um, all of the, all of the fish that you've, you know, put so much work into, um, especially if you're talking about dropping a bunch of money to, to set up a, a rack. Um, but it's all worth it. Uh, it's all fun. And, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I look forward to doing it better, um, in the future when I have the space, but, um, for right now, that's all I've got. So hopefully, um, if you go watch that time lapse video, and uh, after watching this video, hopefully you understand what parts are involved, what what um, construction pieces are involved, and uh, how how easy it really is to set up um, uh, like a, a block and beam style rack, um, like I set up. And uh, like I said, you know, nothing was glued together, nothing was nailed down. Um, it was just all supported by its own weight, and uh, there was no bowing, there was no flexing. Um, I realize that's an eight-foot span, but there's only there's only 80 gallons per per level, and with four two by fours, you're looking at probably around 2,000 pounds per shelf. And uh, with the amount of water that was on it, um, 80 gallons, 8 pounds per gallon roughly, it's only 640 pounds per shelf. So um, it, it was definitely able to hold the amount of weight that was on it. I was never concerned about that. Um, but it is a little bit bulkier. I mean, it's, it's going to be a little bit bulkier than, than an all-wood stand. Um, but, um, it comes with the, the satisfaction of knowing that, uh, it's easy to take down, easy to put up, and, uh, you can do it all yourself. So, that's all I've got right now. That's the first Fan Friday. Hopefully, I can get in contact with the fans who are interested in the tank, um, the tank rack construction video. And uh, actually, um, I might be making some time-lapse videos again here shortly. Maybe I'll set up the camera on the turtles someday and just let them go nuts all day long. Um, so maybe look out for that. That could be fun. Um, but for right now, that's all I've got. All right, guys. See you later.